it's another fantastic day out here and so I'm taking advantage of that and bringing you guys out here to show you some concepts and ideas about simple Milky Way photography. And you know, uh, the reason I've come out here is because last night I came out to this area myself and I took three or four different compositions and I want to run you through each of those. Now, they are quite basic and simple. There is nothing outstanding about any of these shots. And yet, a lot of people ask me about that because where you may live, for example, you, you mightn't have any epic locations to visit and the, the, the landscape might seem fairly drab. And I guess this video is about the fact that no matter what landscape you have, you can make something out of that. And I think you can make a pretty good image. And so that's my intention today is to run you through how I would approach that and what I'm looking for to create those Milky Way images. So I've got three or four places to go. Let's get into it. Now I'm really keen to show you this tree over here in the paddock. Once again, it's just a tree. There's trees everywhere. This place is full of them. But this one, I was able to isolate away from all the other trees. And just driving down the road, I noticed it here. It's just inside this fence here. Now I do happen to know the owners of this place. Uh, but anyway, Milky Way Core comes down there in the west. And I thought, this is probably 12 months ago, I thought this would make a great backdrop here nice open paddock with just the one tree in the foreground and so i shot a panorama i think it was a nine shot pano using my nikon z6 with the 20 mil f 1.8 z mount i shot it in a portrait orientation f 2.2 15 second shutter speed iso 6400 and that's not unlike the settings that i use for a lot of my uh, images so you know there's no great rocket science there either so I just started off probably a little bit more to the north swept around towards the south and it's just a simple panorama one thing I did do though is I put low level lights I put one underneath the tree to give it a little bit of silhouette and back uh, backlight and I put another one off to the right hand side just to give a little touch of light onto the foreground because there's a bit of a crop in this paddock it's not very high but I think this image will come out okay Okay, so what I'll do, I'll get photo pills out and I'll show you exactly what this scene looks like in the daytime, like this, with the augmented reality view. So what I do, I'll just come down to night time and you can see the Milky Way comes down right over the top of the tree. And that's exactly what I saw here last night when I was here. Now, when I was here last night, I could see that. I don't need this app. I can see it clear as day. It's quite dark out here. But in the daytime here, this is a great reference for me so I can actually see exactly where that core is going to be in the sky. And so that's the use of photo pills. It's just this, the augmented reality view is so, so handy. The thing that stands out here, as it will with all of these compositions, is just how simple this really is. 
and there's nothing uh, epic, nothing outstanding at all. And yet, these can make wonderful nightscape images. And that's my point to you guys. I think a lot of people get very frustrated because they say to themselves, I don't know where to go to shoot my nightscapes. Well, here is a classic example. And the other thing is, once you work out the direction and the settings, you know where the Milky Way is going to be. You know it's going to be over there in the western sky. And I've mentioned this many times to you before. I'll set my GPS in the car. Um, and I'll show you one thing on the GPS. There's this little uh, arrow, or it's a compass on the GPS in the car. And I refer to that all the time as I'm driving around the countryside because it shows me at a glance what direction I'm actually facing. So if I'm driving south, I know that at my right hand side, I'm gonna see the Milky Way core in the latter part of the year. And if I know that if I'm, if I'm driving south, for example, and in the east on the, on the left hand side, that's where the core is gonna come up in the early part of the year. So that's locked into my brain. So when I'm driving around, I don't need to stop and get photo pills out and all this sort of thing. I just have a rough idea already. And then when I stop at a location like this and I want a bit more fine tune, I can then get my photo pills app out, get it up and have a look and actually see where the core is exactly behind the tree. So once again, I think the key to all of this is to search locations. Now I'm driving along here, it's a daytime, I can see what's going on around in the paddocks. And I do this so often and I see little things. And sometimes it might be just a, a, a tree over there in a paddock somewhere or it might be uh, a, a fence post or, 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 a, or a, a lake or a dam or something on the side of the road that's not far from the road. I can actually see it. And then all I have to do is work out, is this going to line up with where the Milky Way core is at this time of year? Or if not, maybe uh, earlier in the year or later in the year or something like that. And, and that's the process I always go through. So I don't just go out blind and hope for the best because that never works out for me. Um, and so, pretty much that's what I always do. So today I'm going to show you a couple of those little things that I've noticed on my journey and my travels around the countryside. Now I want you to have a close look at this little tree in the background here. This is a classic example of what I'm talking about. It's just a little tiny dead tree on the side of the road here and nobody would even take a second look at this. But last night I stopped here on the way home and that tree right here on the side of the road and I was really happy with the shot that I got. Milky Way core setting down there in the western sky just behind the tree. And I shot this with the Nikon 35mm f1.8 uh, Z mount lens on the Nikon Z6. I'll tell you what, <laughs> this is another spot that I came to last night, but when I first arrived here, I had to have a couple of deep breaths because the subject matter that I wanted to shoot here, which I'm gonna show you in a moment, is almost completely overgrown with this really long grass on the side of the road. Nevertheless, I persisted. Let's go and have a look at that shot. So this is the scene that I wanted to shoot. It's just a really basic gateway. There's two enormous big timber fence post with an open um, gate there. There's no gate. And I'd been here on a couple of previous occasions and I'd noticed that there's a beautiful clear open sky down there facing towards the west. And of course now, October, I know that the Milky Way core is gonna be down there. So I thought, yeah, oh beauty, I'll come back here and shoot this. But the last time I was here, there was no grass. 
<laughs> have a look at it. And I've actually done some gardening. I've actually ripped it out with my bare hands last night, a whole heap of this stuff, just to make it look a little bit easier to, to actually uncover the, the gate posts here. It was absolute jungle here last night. The grass here is, well, it's up to about here on me. And it's just thick all the way through here. Now, I know a lot of you are going to be cringing because it's snake season and long grass like this, they'll love that. Well, yeah, they probably do, but hey, I just make a lot of noise. There's probably brown snakes around here and you'd never see them in there. Um, but, you know, I've been here a little while already. I made a lot of noise. Um, go like this. I'm wearing long pants. I, I, I'm okay. I've never, look, I've never ever seen any snakes in all my journeys. And a lot of you people who don't live in Australia are absolutely petrified of Australian snakes. Don't worry about them. Look, they're out here for sure, but they leave you alone. If you leave them alone, they'll leave you alone as well. Okay, so what I decided to do was not give up and go somewhere else. I decided to persist with this shot. So as I said, I did a bit of gardening, pulled out some of this grass, put the camera pretty much where this camera is now, and I stacked some background shots. Now, by the way, the Milky Way was looking absolutely awesome up there in the sky. So I was using my uh, Z6 with the 20mm f1.8, set that to f2.2, and I shot 15 second shutter speeds and I stacked 10 of those at ISO 6400, just for the background sky. No lighting on the foreground. Then I did my standard light painting technique. I um, made sure my focus was sharp on these foreground posts because they're quite close. In fact, that one's probably about two and a half meters from the camera, so it's quite close. Um, stopped down to f5 and my ISO down to ISO 500. Now, I've done that plenty of times. Uh, it's pretty much my standard settings. I know you can vary that a little bit, but that's what I like to do. And shot my foreground shutter speed at 15 seconds as well. And did a few shots, maybe uh, seven or eight. I possibly won't use all of those, but I, one of the things I always do is when I'm out in the field, I make sure I shoot enough so that if I don't need them all, then I, at least I've got them. You know, if I only shot two or three and I think, oh no, I forgot to light something, then I can't go back and do it again. It's too late then. So um, yeah, and look, it mightn't be the most spectacular image in the world. And I guess that's what this video is all about. But it's about persistence and it's about looking for something that everyone else is just gonna drive straight past. And I hope you like it. Now, I know a lot of you are probably going to look at this and say, well, it's not that great an image anyway, so why didn't you just move on to somewhere else? You know, plenty of times we do that. We give up on a location and a subject matter, and we do move on to somewhere else. You can do what you like, but my point, in fact, the whole point of this video is to, is to encourage you not to do that, is to persist with these simple compositions like this. And, you know, because sometimes there's an absolute diamond in the rough and you'll find an image and you'll say, I would never have shot that under normal circumstances, but I took the time to actually do it on that one night. So that's what I did last night. And, you know, when I first saw these old uh, fence posts, I thought they were just so rugged and so beautiful, the old rusted wire and everything else. The grass, hey, I can't do anything about it. It's springtime here. There's a crop in the paddock. It's going crazy. But there is a couple of other shots I took here. So let's go and I'll explain those at the same time. Now, something that you'll often hear me mention on this channel is to actually maximize your location time. So in other words, when you come out to a place like this, just don't go for one shot. See if you can find two or three or whatever. And so what I decided to do was just shoot a really basic, simple panorama along this uh, road here. So the Milky Way core was beautiful over there in the sky. The sky was fantastic, so I had to maximize my time under good, clear skies. So what I did, I set up my camera into portrait orientation, and I took about seven or eight, I can't remember exactly, starting here and going across there, incorporating my 
my posts over there as well and all the long grass and everything else. I set up two low level lights, so the Z96 video lights had one over here, as far over there as I could get, and one down this way, sort of cross lighting. And you'll know from my previous videos that I, I like to cross light when I'm using low level lights or, or any lighting for that matter. So the camera's here, I'm not lighting from this angle, I'm lighting from the sides. And with a pano, that's a bit more difficult because you've got to actually uh, not get the lights in the shot if you can help it because you're moving the, the camera around. But anyway, I was pretty happy with how that shot looks. Um, and yeah, hope you like that one as well. Now, once again, you're probably gonna laugh at me, but you know, what is a night out shooting under the stars without a shot of the car? So, I pulled my car up just here, as you can see, and put the camera right down low, down here, where this camera is right now. Stuck on my 35 millimeter F1.8 Nikon lens, and decided I'm gonna do a shot of the car, which I did. And at the 35 mil focal length, what that tends to do is draw that background, so the Milky Way up there in the sky, fantastically behind the car, draws it in a little bit closer, so it looks like uh, it's bigger, I guess, and it is, it's magnified that bit more. And also at 35 mil, the car isn't a little dot way off in the distance. The other thing I like about using a little bit longer focal length lenses is less distortion. Now, when you put cars and subjects that have particular shapes in them, um, ultra wide angle lens, for example, 14 millimeter lenses, you'll find the wheels become these oval shapes. They look more like footballs and wheels, and I don't like that. I much prefer the perspective to look the way it should look. So therefore my 35 mil lens. And I did a number of background shots, so with no light painting on the car just yet. I think I did 10 at um, F2.2, eight second shutter speed, I think that was, at ISO 6400. Then I did a number, maybe about six or seven or eight, or more, I don't know, I can never remember these things, light painting around the car. Now this car is hard to light paint because it's white, very reflective, and in fact most cars are hard. Uh, black is probably the hardest, white's difficult, and most other colours because, and this is metallic paint. But apart from that, I love shots like this, and with the core in the background, what could be better than that? So there you go. There's a number of quite simple compositions which I hope inspire you to get out under the stars and just shoot whatever it is that's in your local area to shoot. Now these are not spectacular, but I'm quite happy with the composition and, and just the way they turned out. And you know, nightscape photography is difficult. We've got to do a bit of research, we've got to find our locations, we've got to work out our camera settings and all the other things. But you know, the number one thing at the end of it all is to get some enjoyment from our images. And just coming here for me is fun. There's nothing really technical about that. I don't have to worry too much. I just enjoy getting out under the stars. And I want to encourage you to do exactly the same thing. All right, well, that's all I've got for you this week. And I hope you've enjoyed it. And look, I'd love you to uh, like and subscribe to the channel if you feel led to do so. Always love reading the comments down below as well. So happy to chat with you down there about anything we've talked about in this video or any of my other videos. So until I see you next time, you have a fantastic week. I'll see you later.